read those words a third time, but this time aloud in unison. Let's say it together. What are those words? Be not grieved. My mind, uh, for whatever reason today, was revolving around this situation, situation that has arose here in, in uh, Genesis. Genesis is a book uh, comprised of about 50 chapters. All of us know it is the book of beginnings. And so many things uh, begin here in Genesis. It's really a, a book of revelation. And no revelation is a book that ends the canon as we know it. But in truth, uh, Genesis is a book of revelation. No one would know these things, and indeed no one knew these things until God um, revealed them to his servant Moses. All of these things that are written from the very first chapter, the very first verse, are words of revelation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right, right, and those are words of revelation because everybody doesn't know that. There is that category of people that the Bible calls fools. Anybody ever heard that scripture? The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. You have to be a fool to think that all that exists this came into existence on its own. It had to be somebody back behind who brought about what we call intelligent design. I believe it's impossible for this kind of order that comprises our world to exist without there be, being somebody who operated in the chaos. Aren't you glad that you serve a God that specializes in working in chaotic situations? He worked in the chaos, and that's why Moses was able to have that revelation in the beginning, God. Somebody called him that necessary being. Because nothing could have been without him. John talks about it later with his own revelation and says, you know, uh, there was not anything made that was, that was not made by him. In the beginning was the word. Anyway, what John said? Word was what? With God. Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. Nothing was made without him. He designed the world. Just got up, somebody said, on the morning of nothing. That's deep, ain't it? How, how do you get up on the morning of nothing? <laughs> and then he just opens his mouth in nothingness and says, let there be. Mm. Some of you can relate because that's your situation. He, he took your nothingness and made something out of it. One songwriter said, I don't, I don't know how many know it, a song I heard growing up, something beautiful. Anybody heard that song? Something good, all of my confusion. He understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he said he made something beautiful out of my life. So Genesis is about that. It's about that beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it's interesting, and I'm not going to stay there, but the, it says the earth was what? Void. Without what? Form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And uh, that's, that's a mystery all by itself, and many people try to conjecture what it is. I, I'm going to tell you, I really don't know. I don't know. He made everything in the first verse and did everything. <laughs> it's void, formless, 
Darkness is on the face of the deep. All we can do is conjecture, and I know you've heard this, some scholars conjecture, especially Pentecostal scholars, and what we call the gap theory, you know, and um, many believe that's when Satan rebelled against God and war broke out in the cosmos and that's how we came up with the Grand Canyon. I've heard those theories. Y'all hear that stuff? <laughs> See, they say all of that stuff is because there was war in the heavens. And, and uh, it just tore this world asunder and threw it into a, uh, an abyss of darkness. Some say that's where the dinosaurs were. I guess that makes sense. You know, they were somewhere. Those bones. Y'all don't want to talk to me tonight, you know. You can't deny those bones there. Them dinosaurs were somewhere back there, y'all. That's if you're going to conjecture. I suppose that's a good place to put it. But but the point is, perhaps something happened that caused the world to be void or empty. Hmm. And uh, formless and dark. But what I love about it, when there was darkness upon the deep, the Bible says that the Spirit of God moved upon the face. Somebody ought to tell God, move on me right now. Mm. You know, wherever God moves, something got to happen. Wherever God moves, things have to get in motion. Nothing stay stagnant where God is. That's why I don't know why saints, some saints like to be stagnant and stuck. God, when the first time you introduce to the spirit, God, the spirit is moving. Not sitting somewhere, not settled in one place. <laughs> Bible says the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And then that's when God got busy with his creative acts. And the world uh, came into existence as we know it today. Genesis records the beginning of the first man and first woman and tells us how they were created. They were created in the image of God. How many of y'all know that you're something special? Everybody tell somebody, I'm special, I'm special. <laughs> special because God made you <laughs> differentiated from everything else huh because we are the only ones God created in his image and in his likeness which means God has expectation of us that he doesn't have of anybody else now, I don't know about you all, and I, I hope I don't offend nobody. I'm better than a dog. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm making some dog lovers upset. Yeah. Your dog is fine, but, but your dog is not human. Yeah. I had a trainer. Uh, I, I tell my church about him sometime and went to him for a good little while. You can tell I ain't been there lately, but... <laughs> He would take a shower with his dog. Now that's too close for me. Yeah. Some people think dogs are just like, no they're not. Some people think their kitty cat is just like you, no they're not. <laughs> what God said about man, he didn't say about anything else. Bible said when he made man God got intimate with the activity metaphorically he can I take my time tonight stooped down into the dust of the earth formed it with his own hand somebody ought to tell somebody I'm fearfully and wonderfully made God fashioned me with his hand and then after he formed me with his hand from the dust of the earth the Bible says that God metaphorically stooped down from heaven, breathed into the nostrils of man, and man became a living soul. 
Somebody ought to tell God, breathe on me right now. He used to sing that song, let the breath of the Lord now breathe on me. <laughs> Beginning of humankind is there, and we know the story of the fall, introduction of sin. Then we I introduced to God's plan and methodology of redemption. Then we watch God delineate for himself a people that brings us to where we are tonight. Has to have a people to bring about the redeemer, the seed of the woman. That's what he told the serpent. He's going to give you a death blow. You're going to bruise his heel. But, but he's going to bruise your head. How many of y'all know the devil is already defeated? <laughs> already defeated. <clears throat> Genesis records the process by which God initiates all of these things. There we introduced Abraham and the Abrahamic covenant. I'm not going into every facet of it, but, but Abraham we introduced to in chapter 11. He's called out from the land of Ur, from the house of his father, Terah, and God tells him, you know, it's a lovely little story. He tells him, I want you to go into a land that, that I will show thee. I'm calling Abraham out in faith. And then he tells him, you know, I'm going to take your seed and, and through your seed, oh, y'all know the story, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Isn't that something? And Abraham obeys the command of God, steps out. I always like to talk about that. And, and goes uh, in a direction that he doesn't even know what the direction is. He just follows God. Follows God not knowing what the destination is. You know, I, I get troubled with folk today that, that know everything. <laughs> Aren't you troubled by that? Believers today think they're supposed to know everything. You, if you know everything, you don't need faith. You, you, we operate in faith for the unknown. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, I don't know what the destination is, but I know a God who does know. And so I trust him. Hello. A lot of y'all know the future. I'm not going to get no help tonight. Some of y'all sit next to a prophet and prophetess. They know everything about life. They even know the weather tomorrow. I don't know the weather. I don't even know what's going to exactly happen to my, I know what my plans are, but I don't exactly know what's going to happen to my, but because I have faith, I know him who holds to my. <laughs> and so Abraham is that catalyst. You go from Abraham, God is delineating his plan, his process. You go from Abraham, you get to Isaac, and from Isaac, you get to Jacob, and Jacob, you get to his sons. And that sets up the stage, and all of this is beginning. Israel is beginning. In Genesis, we read about Israel, and my terminology is Israel is in what I call their embryonic state. They have not matured yet as a nation. It'll be hundreds of years before they blossom. <laughs> But they're still God's chosen. They're still God's elect. They're still God's special people. They're still God's uh, uh, called out ones. They're still God's priest nation. They're, they're, they're not fully formed yet. They're not known as a nation. <laughs> you know, it, what I like about God, he always starts out with small stuff. And some of you all ain't going to never get to the big stuff because you don't praise him for the small stuff. I wish I was in the right church. Some of us live with resentment. Our lives, I feel like preaching, I believe. Our lives are jaundice. Look at your neighbor. You might be sitting next to a jaundice believer. Angry. Upset. You know, we live, in, we live in the day where everybody feels like they're entitled. 
And a lot of that is not the fault of the saints. It's, it's a lot of us preachers who have mistaught you. And this puts you at the top. No, 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 baby. You got to climb that mountain. Can I get a witness in here? There's no victory without a fight. I'm sick and tired of people preaching cheap salvation. Well, I know, I know getting saved is free, but y'all ain't going to hear me. But if you're going to grow in God, it's going to cost you something. If any man come unto me, he must deny himself. We need somebody willing to deny themselves. Then you got to take up your cross and he said, follow me. And let me tell you something. There ain't no need in taking up a cross if you ain't planning on getting on the cross. I wish I was preaching right now. Jesus carried his cross to Calvary. Despise. I feel like y'all need to tell somebody that. Despise not the days of small things. We can't get to the big things. Can I stay here just a moment? Because we're too busy resenting the little things. Why would God give me a, a palatial house when, when I'm ungrateful for my three-room bungalow? I'm walking around resentful because cause, cause Suffolk, Suffolk and Bishop Edwell's house is five times bigger than my house. And I'm being resentful. I done forgot about all the homeless folk I walked by today. Don't have no place to live. I wish I was in the right church. I'm upset because, because Bishop Dockery's car is longer than my car. And I done walked by all the people today that don't even have bus fare. Somebody need to tell somebody, you better praise God for what you have right now. I wish I had some praises in the house. Who can praise God for just a little bit? Oh, I wish I had somebody that would tell your neighbor, I'm giving him a big praise for just a little bit. Because he told me, if I be faithful in a few things, if I praise him for a little bit, he'll place me over a whole lot. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Go oh, just take 10 seconds and praise him and then you can be seated. But act like you're grateful. Act like you're grateful. I'm grateful. I don't have designer clothes, but I'm grateful for the clothes I got from the budget store. I don't have the best car, but I'm grateful for a putt putt. I can't afford membership at the Beverly Hills Club, but I thank God I'm still alive. I'm clothed and I got activity of my limbs and I'm in my right mind. I could be crazy. But I got enough sense to tell God, thank you. He coming. He coming. He coming, my son. You may be seated. I need an old mother to tell somebody, I praise him for what he's done. Sometimes we too fancy with the songs. The old mother just said, I praise him. I praise him. I praise him for what he has done. What did he do? He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Look 
where he brought me from look what he took me through look where I'm headed in him my time is just about gone forms this little this little country I love you know I hear some of y'all praising him I love to hear saints praise the Lord <laughs> can't nobody praise him like sanctified folks let the redeemed of the Lord sing <laughs> mm. I'm trying to move on but I'm having flashbacks I'm having flashbacks. I remember that day. Can I use my bonnets? I remember that day I liked it, didn't make it. But then came Jesus. Brought me out of the miry clay. Set my feet on a rock to stay. Put a song in my soul today. Song of his praises. Hallelujah. Joseph has no sons still an embryonic nation but God is growing the nation and he has no sons you know the Bible story and uh, most of them I mean, you know Bible something else he had by women he didn't really love Y'all trying to get quiet on me. Disregard. Press the book. He really did love Leah. Poor Leah. You know, I feel sorry for Leah. <laughs> oh, that's a mess. Ain't that something? Leah's, Leah was twisted, Bishop Dockery, like some of these women are twisted today. They keep having babies for a man that don't love them. I'm getting in trouble. I wish somebody would tell me preach because I'm scared. <laughs> Just keep having babies. <clears throat> you know, she, she, one of the babies, she, she said, I'm going to have this one. She said, maybe he'll love me now. He didn't love her. He, he loved Rachel. I'm in the book, y'all. loved Rachel and Rachel had two sons well, there's only one son I'm primarily concerned with tonight um, his name was Joseph Benjamin was the baby son and that's when Rachel died in childbirth with Benjamin or Benoni son of my trouble Joseph was first born to Rachel and, 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 and when Joseph was born there was a gap between him and Benjamin when Joseph was born his daddy was doting all over him like Bishop and Lady Doctor over this new grandbaby <laughs> I feel you <laughs> he was a son of his pride, apple of his eye. <laughs> he was special to his father. I'm going to tell you the truth. Not only was he special to his father, he was special to God. <laughs> and then his father loved him so much until he couldn't help but distinguish him. Can I have about seven minutes? Y'all didn't say I could. <laughs> Treated him a little bit better, didn't he? <laughs> he loved Joseph. Bible says he bought him a coat of many colors. He didn't get those other boys a coat of many colors. 
<laughs> you know, you know, children know when a parent has a favorite. Can I get a witness somewhere? Let me hear all the non-favorites say amen. You. Some of y'all been scarred for life. You're still, still upset with your mama and daddy. I don't even know what you see in them. <laughs> but it was a fact. And he couldn't help himself. <laughs> he cherished Joseph. And not only though did, 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 did Jacob cherish Joseph. I, I, I hate to tell y'all this, God cherished Joseph. Now he loved us all, but, but God, for whatever reason, he deals with us differently. Can I get a witness somewhere? Loves every one of us, but, 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 but his call is not always the same for every one of us. There's some of us that God chooses to use in unique ways. And it's not for us to get puffed up and proud. It's just a sovereign act of the selection of God. And God loved Joseph and, 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 and dealt with Joseph differently from the other brothers. And, 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 and we know he did because, because the Bible says that Joseph was a dreamer. Isn't it nice when God invades your dream life? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe, maybe I'm in the, anybody in this room ever had a visitation from God while you were asleep? How many know he can talk to you while you're asleep? Minister to your spirit. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to just drop this on you. Sometime God pays you a visit and your conscious mind doesn't ever know he came. You'll get this later. But you ever went to bed troubled and woke up all right? That didn't just happen by chance. God stopped by your bed last night. And minister, I feel like talking to somebody. I wish I had some believers. He will minister to you in your subconscious mind. And you'll go to bed in hell, but wake up the next morning and say, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. If somebody know what I'm talking about, look at your neighbor and say, I don't know when he did it, but he did it. He fixed my mind and I don't know how he fixed my mind. But I went to bed tormented, but woke up in the morning free. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes. Lord just told me to tell somebody, I'm going to visit you tonight. Told me you may as well praise me now. Because when you get home, I'm going to walk up in your bedroom. I'm going to get in bed underneath the covers and... By the time you wake up in the morning, I dare you to prophesy to a neighbor because I feel it in my spirit. Tell your neighbor, by the time you wake up in the morning, the Lord will have already fixed it. Who am I talking to? Who needs an overnight fix? If it's you, you ought to praise him for what's going to happen in the morning. I need you to tell three people. I'm prophesying. Tell me it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready. It's getting ready. It's getting ready. It's getting ready. 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 Y'all got to do it. Do it, Jake's on and say it's getting ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's getting ready to happen. I don't know what it is. It's getting ready to happen. Somebody's gonna get healed. Somebody's gonna get their bills paid. Somebody's child is getting ready to get saved. Somebody's marriage is getting ready to be put back to it's getting ready to happen. Somebody lift their hands up and say, let it be me. You may be seated. <laughs> Pastor.
after he told me he's going to fix your church. I'm talking to some pastors right now. He told me, I'm going to fix your church. I'm going to do with your congregation what you couldn't do. Because God specializes. Y'all ain't hearing me. So he was that son. I got to close. He was that son. He was that one that God favored. He was that one that God set his eyes upon. And God dealt with him. Y'all know he dealt with him, didn't he? Talked to him and told him, you know, I'm going I'm to take you somewhere. And where I'm taking you, everybody can't go. Somebody said favor's not fair. That's the truth. Favor's not fair. Favor's just in the hands of God. <laughs> hmm? Neb Nebuchadnezzar, when he came to his senses, he said he'd do it according to his will. In the armies of heaven and among all the inhabitants of the earth. Y'all remember that? Said none can stay his hand or say what doest thou. He just does what he wants to do. And what I like, he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Like he wants to do it. And that's why can't nobody do you like Jesus. I just do what I do. Tell somebody, he just does what he does. And you that know you got a special anointing and blessing on your life, tell him, he just deals with me like he deals with me. And, 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 and then bring it on down to earth and say what makes it so amazing is I already know I don't deserve it. You don't earn favor, God just gives favor. You don't earn grace, I wanna talk to somebody. Quit walking around here acting like you deserve grace. No grace is his unmerited favor. That's why you, you're looking at me strange when I jump up and down. And some of you are wondering why I've jumped up and down 10 times tonight. It's because I cannot figure out why God would bless a wretch like me. Amazing grace. Anybody feel like I feel? I don't have no business preaching to you tonight. I said it. I don't have no business being somebody's presiding bishop. But thank God for his grace. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to praise you. We got to run home, take 10 seconds, and thank him for that grace. Thank him for that house you ain't got no business being in. Thank him for that job you ain't got no business having. Some of y'all know y'all to still be in the street, but he brought you out the street and cleaned you up. Thank God for the cleanup. Thank God for his redemption. So he made the mistake. I need five more minutes. You may be sitting. He made the mistake of telling others what God was doing in his life. I'm not one who says you should never speak it. I just think you need to be selective about to whom you speak. Because there's saboteurs in the church. Ghostbusters, <laughs> dream killers, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why the pastor can't talk to everybody when God puts a vision in his spirit. Because everybody don't see what the pastor can see, y'all. 
I remember when we built that church in Indianapolis, uh, I didn't tell the board how much money we had in the bank. Because we didn't have much money in the bank. <laughs> but how many know when God says I'm going to do it? How many know he'll do it? Look at your neighbor and say, say confidently, he will do it. Tell him I'm talking to you. I'm prophesying tonight. Look back at your neighbor. Make eye contact with him and tell him, thus saith the Lord. I will do it. Look back at him and say, God said, ask me a hard thing. trying not to prophesy but he told me to tell somebody tonight you've been thinking too small talking too small he told me to tell somebody your prayer is too little he said I want to bless you with a ridiculous blessing that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard Oh, I wish I had some takers tonight. Is there anybody in this room that will accept the impossible? Yeah. Who in this room is willing to receive that blessing that has evaded you? The last 10 years, the Lord told me, if you wrap your arms around it with a praise right now. Oh, I feel like preaching. I see showers of blessing. I see showers. Of, I see showers of blessing. Bishop. Ah. You can be seated, but before you sit down, rock in your blessing for a minute. Rock. Surely goodness and mercy. I'm trying to move on. got to close Joseph shared his dream it's 923 shooting for 930 I just want you to take this home with you tonight because somebody not, is not going to be the same after tonight. I'm not blowing smoke at you. I feel God in the house tonight. Somebody's not going to be the same. Can I say that again? Somebody's not going to be the same. Ikabo sitia. Ikabate! God said, I'm going to shake some stuff up. I'm going to move some things around. <laughs> Joseph's brothers became jealous of him. And I don't have to go through all the machinations to tell you the story. They set him up. You know what they did? They, they, they took him off. Tricked their father into releasing him. I believe Jacob sensed some messiness. But he released his son to go with them. And you know what they did. Truth is, they would have killed him had not one of his brothers had just a little bit of righteousness. And say, we can't kill him, he's our brother. Oh, I wish the church would learn that today. I wish, deliver me from the bloodthirsty saint. Why would he 
when you want to shed my blood when Jesus has shed his blood. He threw him in a ditch. Thank God for ditches. Some of y'all don't even know the ditch saved your life. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock. To, he put a song in my soul. Your neighbor don't get it. Tell your neighbor that did save his life. It hid him from the murderers. Some of y'all can't handle being unknown and being obscure. But you don't know. God says I'm preserving you for another time. If I leave you out front, somebody will kill you. And you can't be killed until my mission is performed in your life. Oh, I need somebody to tell somebody, I can't die. Now don't let your neighbor get you twisted. You're not telling that your neighbor that you're going to live forever. But tell your neighbor, I know I can't die now. Because I still got some unfulfilled promises that have to come to pass. All of the promises of God in him are uh, yea. Oh. I wish somebody, don't speak it to your neighbor, they won't believe it. Speak it over yourself and say it shall come to pass. I'm gonna live to see it. I'm gonna live to enjoy it. I don't tell somebody I don't feel like dying just yet. I want every blessing he promised me. Every word he spoke in eternity. I'm going to live till it comes to pass in my reality. Trying to close. You may be seated. And so they sell him away a slave. <laughs> sell him away a slave. Isn't that horrible? For a man who, who in reality is a young prince. <laughs> and they send him away. Can I talk? I got time. They sent him away. Into Egypt. In the Potiphar's house. You know what happens in Potiphar's house. He goes in a slave, but a few days later, he's the steward of the house. Isn't it amazing how God put you up? <laughs> then Potiphar's wife sets her eyes on him. Y'all know the story? Because she spots that anointing. She spots that favor. Realize it's never you. Help your neighbor break the ego and tell him you really ain't that good. Oh, I want you to work with him. Tell him you ain't that handsome and you ain't that pretty. Oh, go back at him. Say, I got to break you down tonight. Tell him you ain't even that important. It's that anointing that the devil's after. You ain't that big. He just wants to kill the God that's in you because he wants to cancel the assignment. See, when you get it right, you can work it right. 
But you got to get your mind in order. You don't sing that good. You don't preach that good. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't dress that good. You ain't about nothing until the devil wants to be bothered with you. You say I can talk tonight? That trouble keep coming to me because God's in you. Potiphar's house. Sister Potiphar messes him up. He ends up in the jail. God uses him in the jail. See, see, when God's anointing, can I talk tonight? When his anointing and favor is upon you, he's using you in every season of your life. The Lord told me to tell somebody, I'm using you right now. Even in the quiet season. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I feel like preaching here tonight. You ever, you ever, you ever have that, that season in your life when God goes on radio silence? The Lord told me to tell you, I'm using you even when I'm not talking to you. He said, when I'm not talking, I still got goodness and mercy. I need some honest folk. Don't act like you prayed every day. God said, I kept you on your prayerless days. I wish I had some honest folk tell somebody he kept me on the days I didn't pray. I was too mad to pray. I was too frustrated to pray. And the devil thought he had me, but God said, get back, devil. They may not have prayed, but my blood is still on them. I'm getting ready to close. I'm in the dungeon. My brothers have betrayed me. I thought I had a, a release in part of his house. I went in his house. I didn't do nothing but good. <laughs> this man trusted me with everything, even his wife. And, and I kept his wife. He didn't know his wife was wicked. I could have slipped it in and nobody would have known what went down but because I have integrity right. and I'm in the dungeon and, and I don't deserve to be in the dungeon I didn't do anything to merit being in the dungeon But you had favor. See, sometimes, oh God, we miss teach favor. And we think favor only means sunshine. But David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley. <laughs> Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. <laughs> I'm closing. <laughs> the butler forgets him.
even when people forget you, God? He still has you on his mind. And I remember a message. Can, can I have a couple more minutes? I remember a message God gave me years ago. When the Lord said, I have you graven in the palms of my hand. God told me to tell you every time I lift my hands up, I see your name. Every time I get ready, y'all not hearing me tonight. God said every time I get ready to work and I raise my hand in the action, he says, I see your name engraved in my hand that reminds me that you got a blessing coming. <laughs> Tell somebody you might be next in line. That neighbor didn't receive it because I didn't hear no noise. Find you somebody that's hungry for a miracle and tell them you might be next in line. Tell them it just might be your turn before this service is over. God is strategic. He doesn't do anything haphazardly. He's strategic about what he does. He has a reason for everything that he does. I heard one man of God say, and his timing is perfect. You can't tell God when you need to be delivered. He knows when to deliver you. And so he ends up in Pharaoh's house. And by the time God gets through, I'm getting ready to close. You've been so patient. Not only is he in Pharaoh's house, he becomes the prime minister of all of Egypt. And Pharaoh de facto has put the kingdom in his hand. But he's still not delivered. Because he's still, y'all ain't going to like me tonight. He's still angry. He's still resentful. He's still mad at his brothers. He's resentful about what he had to go through. Y'all done got quiet now. To everybody shouting, not free. Some of the screams are screams of resentment. Screams of torment. And there are a lot of tormented people. I feel like talking to y'all tonight. Sitting in the pew. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm looking to see if you got a spirit of freedom or a spirit of torment. Saints carry a lot of baggage. Tell me to preach, Pastor Glaze. I need to be released. You're a psychology major, aren't you? I thought so. You know there's a lot of crazy. Um, that's not a, a politically correct word to use. But tonight, I, is it okay if I don't moan tonight? The 
the longer I pastor, the more I understand. Oh, you got a psychology degree too? There are a lot of saints who are tore up from the inside. They made it from the prison to Potiphar's house. But they don't know how to enjoy Potiphar's house because they're still tied to the past. Oh, I want to preach. Y'all won't tell me to preach. They carried around baggage. And I'm not delegitimizing your hurt, but you'll never be free until you get released from your hurt. You can speak in tongues, you can run and dance, you can jump and shout, you can preach and sing, but you're not free until you're able to release your pain. Look at somebody and say, I'm not playing with you tonight. I'm on a Holy Ghost mission to minister to your deepest pain, your deepest hurt, your deepest struggle. And the Lord told me to tell you, come unto me. All ye that labor. Pastors, pastoring, heart. Sitting in the big seat with your head, with your legs crossed and your head held high, heart. Saved and sanctified, but hell raising at home. And I'm going to trick you tonight. It don't mean I'm not saved. I'm just wounded. But why should you remain wounded when he was bruised? <laughs> wounded for my transgression. Bruised for my iniquity. Tell somebody he was chastised. So that you and I can have peace. Why would I not have peace when I serve the Prince of Peace? I need two more minutes. I won't take it until you tell me to take two more minutes. Tell your neighbor, you ain't gonna need the psychologist to learn if you take this medicine tonight. My peace, I leave unto you, my peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth. God has a peace. Oh, I feel like preaching here tonight. A mind blowing peace, a brain short circuiting peace. God says, I have a peace that don't make no sense. It passes all understanding. I gotta close. So I want everybody to look at somebody. Let the Holy Ghost turn your head this time. Think about it before you turn your head. And make eye contact and make them look at you. Talk to them like an old church mother or church father. Say, look at me. <laughs> tell them the Lord told the preacher to tell me to tell you be not grieve. Don't be angry with yourself. 
Stop the self-loathing. Stop the self-hating. Be not grieved. Don't get hung up on your past. You dropped the ball. Yes, you failed God. But be not grieved. He said, I died that you might live. I knew you were going to fall before you fell. Be not grieved. See, we don't like to preach like that. He died for our sins, y'all. See, you don't like, I really don't want my brother to preach like that. He died for your sins, B.C. and A.D. They're going to impeach me now. So since I'm going to get impeached, I may as well tell it all. He died for your sins before you got saved. He died for your sins after you got saved. If we sin. I didn't tell you to sin, but he said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. I need somebody to help me preach. Look at somebody boldly. Some of you too self-righteous to say it, but if you're not, look at somebody boldly and say, I don't care what you know about me. Look back up. Say, I don't care what you've been gossiping about. What you've been telling other saints when I fell, when I did this, when I did that. I have an advocate with the Father. You can say everything you want to say. I'm not walking around the church with my head hung down. Who can lay any charge to God's elect? Tell your neighbor I'm not trying to sin. And I'm not condoning sin. But if I sin, I got an advocate with the Father. The devil is an accuser of the brethren. But every time the devil accuses, Jesus walks up and say, but the blood. When I see the blood, Shake your neighbor's hand and say, hey, neighbor. Oh. I know we're not supposed to shake hands. Excuse me for telling you to shake hands, but look back at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. The blood sign my name. The blood. <laughs> what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Would you answer your neighbor and say nothing? Nothing. Ah, nothing. Oh, precious. Is that flow? Give yourself a bath with the blood. That makes me white as snow. No other found out no. Nothing. That's why I heard the mother say, keep me under the blood. That precious blood under that cleansing, healing flood. Keep me, Savior, from day to day. Under that precious blood. Bother your neighbor one last time. 
and say, hey, neighbor, I will not be grieved because I'm under the blood. My sins are under the blood. My money is under the blood. My job is under the blood. My marriage is under the blood. My children are under the blood. <laughs> under the blood. I need some pastor to tell another pastor, my church is under the blood. My members are under the blood. Saints tell each other, my pastor's under the blood. I feel like shouting. I feel like dancing. I feel like running. Ah, the blood. Look at your neighbor and forgive me one more time. Say, neighbor, I can't be grieved. Say, neighbor, I refuse to be grieved. Say, neighbor, I will not be grieved. Because if God be for Go back at him and say, I'm going to sign off here. I can't be grieved. It don't matter what happened. It don't matter what come up against me. Tell him I can't be grieved. Because all things work together for the good. To them that love God. That I was caught according to his presence. It's working out. Yes, sir. It's working out. <laughs> yes. people tell them I don't know how it was looking when you came to church tonight but tell them it's already looking better don't stop till you get to seven it's already it's already it's already it's already looking better I got a feeling I got a feeling I 